Today on All Across Oregon, we'll show you around the city of Medford, Oregon. We're going to visit a good buddy of mine with an incredible bakery, another local entrepreneur with a hip breakfast spot, and finally, we're going to meet a potter whose art reflects the character of the Pacific Northwest. This episode of All Across Oregon was made possible in part by Realtor Scott Lewis, serving Southern Oregon for more than 30 years. Scott lives here, works here, and loves it here. John Warakoy, premier CPA tax professional and profit builder in Southern Oregon and Northern California. And French, with over 30 years' experience in the beauty industry, French carries and sells only the finest of beauty products. Medford, the heart of the Rogue Valley, is home to beautiful sights and lots of amazing things to do. Today, Medford will be our launch pad to introduce you to what Southern Oregon has to offer. But first, let me introduce myself. I was born in New Rochelle, New York. I grew up in the kitchen. From the beginning, I knew what I was going to do. I wanted to be like my family. I wanted to follow in their footsteps. I come from an immigrant family that has restaurants in Italy. They brought it over to the States in the 60s. My family tried to steer me clear of the restaurant business as I became a teenager, but I was just so drawn to every aspect of it, whether it be the, the noise in the kitchen, the camaraderie, the passion you can have for things, the giving people pleasure, uh, bringing smiles to their faces, just all these things combined. It was, I, I couldn't think of doing anything else. And when I came out to Oregon, uh, I was young, so we built Vinny's Italian Kitchen in 1999. We opened in 2000. And so here it is, there's been ups and there's been downs, but here we are still in the restaurant business, uh, doing what we love. I couldn't think of doing anything else. And this is my kitchen. Right now we're gonna start making our pizza crust. So it's an Italian New York style pizza crust. It's a simple crust, but boy, it comes out fantastic. So. So we put some of our salt already. We're going to add some, some olive oil. It's the good stuff, man. You can, the best thing about this is you can use it for everything. Hey, you get some good Italian olive oil. I mean, we're talking anti-age. Now we can wash the shine. We can make a shine. So now that we've found multiple purposes to use extra virgin olive oil, None of that other stuff matters. Don't use that other junk if you're cooking from home. Extra virgin olive oil, imported. Enough of the messing around. I'm gonna wash my hands, I'm gonna get cooking. 20 seconds. Say the alphabet forward and backwards. Get in there, and it's important to get behind your hands. Don't forget behind your hands, okay? There we go. The olive oil is a little spicy. It's, uh, it's burning my cheeks and my head right now. <laughs> so earlier we used extra virgin olive oil. We showed you how you can use that as a moisturizer as well. Uh, what you do to finish that and to really add that is you take your fresh basil, a lot more out of the kitchen than just what you think. (laughs) 
But this show is not about me. This show is about great places to see, great people to meet, and fantastic food to eat. So come with me and explore Oregon and beyond. We're here in the south side of Medford, just one minute off of exit 27 on the I-5. I want you to meet someone. This guy is so cool, named Scott. Known him for years. Wait till you see what he does in this bakery. Crazy, over 38 years experience. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love him. Just a genuine guy. Come on, let me show you what he does. I wanna see what you're doing to separate yourself too from the rest of these, uh, these chains that are moving in and they're just mass producing everything. If someone comes in here, how many desserts are they able to get? Like uh, right now, about 70 uh, items. 70. Once they walk, walk 70, in the door. 70 desserts? Yeah, yeah. After 38 years of doing this. 38 years. 38 years, uh, my clock is at 3.30 in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning every day. I'll stick with the nighttime shift. So. <laughs> if you want to see what I got going in the oven here, this is all the Danish products, cinnamon rolls, caramel Whoa. brand muffins. Um, I've got ham and cheddar filled croissants. I've got uh, turkey pesto filled croissants. And this is the product that we're going to kick out this morning, fill the case with. This oven's impressive. Now, right now we're at 400 degrees. Um, everything bakes at a little bit, a little bit different uh, time. So we kind of babysit the oven. When all this stuff goes in, because of all the work that it takes to get started, um, to prep it out, uh, I train people to babysit this oven. Babysit the and oven. I, I don't care if you're sitting back here just drinking a cup of coffee. I want this stuff to color, and I want it perfect because. If we mess it up, uh, there's your morning, there's, there's your day. There's our day. I should have worn my stretchy pants today. I already feel it. I told <laughs> myself I, I knew I was coming here today. I, I wasn't going to eat yesterday, and I did. And now I'm going to be really full. Yes, you are. So I can't <laughs> wait. So he's going to start doing some ham and cheddar croissants. We're, uh, he's already starting prep for tomorrow. Okay, I thought he already had it rolled inside. See, yeah, see, inside. it's already rolled in. You can see the layers in the dough there. How'd you find this fine young man with the best name in the world? I'm just saying. I know, right? Uh, gosh, he answered one of my ads. Did he? Yeah. So, ham and cheddar croissants for tomorrow, but this is a... Uh, this is a process. This is not a quick little uh, microwave deal action. I'm gonna help you make one of these real quick. Okay. All right, buddy. So just remember, this one right here was made by me, okay? <laughs> so this one we have to make a special mark on because this one needs to be more money. <laughs> this one is made by Vinny D. <laughs> this one was made by Vinny next to Vinny. Put this up here, tip it over. And these uh, got pineapple, raisins. I think you like these too, didn't you, Vinny? I love these. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know how many people I send here for these? No way, that's how you do it. That's crazy. It's by hand where I grew up and uh, when um, I met up with a high school buddy that I haven't seen in about 15, 16 years. Yeah. And he took me uh, downtown where I used to work in the very first bakery. I worked in a German bakery that was built in the 1800s. And the guy that owned that bakery and owned one other bakery, he uh, asked me if I wanted to come work in his bakery. And that's how it started, man. I, I started as a cleanup kid. Oh, that's how you started? Yeah. 
I was really? cleaning up that bakery. It was built in the 1800s, had wooden floors. I had to scrape the floors by hand. And so scrubbing the floors uh, by hand, yeah, we're gonna pass that tradition on to Vince. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think about what goes behind the scenes to a bakery? Do you know what they do? Do you know the hours they put in? So when next time you walk into a bakery and you see that shelf, that display case filled, don't assume that just happened. There's a guy behind the scenes all day, early hours. Getting close. <laughs> but you know, I've always enjoyed this stuff. I mean, I, I love coming in here yeah. and just pounding the dough and, yeah. and then at the end of the day, going out and look at the cases and go, man, I made all that stuff, you know? You did. <laughs> man, yeah. I wish I could transmit this smell through the camera. This is, <laughs> this is not right. I mean, the, do you still smell this? No. After all these I years? I have to walk outside, then I come, come back, back in and I go, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so we got uh, ham and cheddar filled croissants. Look at the size of those things. Yeah, as big as my head. All right, they should be worth at least ten bucks. As a matter of fact, from here on out, twelve dollar. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So now I'm going to be uh, putting simple syrup and glaze on all this stuff. The pores are open in the dough. Yep. We're absorbing all the infusions there. Chocolate croissants and pineapple cream cheese croissants. These are butter horns. All the people uh, older than 40 love these things. <laughs> <laughs> these are croissant twists. Cheese pockets with coconut. Ooh. Oh, man. What is that one right there? Um, getting, you know, a little hungry. What should we try? Hey, if I'm walking into this place for the first time, I saw you on TV, Scott. What am I ordering? I mean, what do you what are you suggesting? I mean, what's what is it I'm looking forward to? I'm saying, do you want something savory or do you want something sweet? Okay. Well, what if I wanted both? Then I hook you up with one of these uh, ham and cheddar croissants and uh, probably one of these fruit Danish. You know, <laughs> we've seen a lot of his product. I think it's time. What do you think? Maybe we should try something. We let them feed us? I think so. Here you, you go, brother. Open that bad boy. <laughs> Before it's gone. That's the way to get them, huh? The chocolate covered beignet. He adds the cream inside. It's gonna keep it moist all day. And uh, it's so light and it's such a nice balance. Oh my goodness, this cream inside. Okay, I'm gonna have to break another piece off there. Okay. Fantastic, amazing. I'm trying to talk to my mouth full. what the sugar does. I want you to meet my friend Brayden, top-notch chef. Tell me what it is, something that makes over easy just even that much more different. Education, I think, um, especially when it pertains to cooking, is, is being forgotten. You know, coming from being a culinary instructor, we do a lot with charter schools and stuff around here that have culinary programs. I'll go and kind of mentor people as, as you know, growing up and show them how to cook, you know, do some demos and judge their cooking contest. And I think that's something that we're trying to bring back is using local farmers, bring the focus back to local ingredients, community-driven uh, programs, stuff that we um, find important. 
Braden and his wife Stephanie are really bringing a unique vibe to downtown Medford. So over easy, we're known for breakfast and brunch. Yeah. Um, I do a little spin on everything. I like to keep things kind of familiar, but do a twist on it, you know? So today I'm gonna do a black eyed pea and ham omelet. It's the first of the year. So, you know, it's good luck in, in South for black eyed peas and ham. I'm gonna start my potato cake off. I got a cast iron here. Let's get that thing frying. This is actually a twist on a place that I used to work called Variable Quandary in Portland. That is killer. So all we're doing now, we're just, we're just giving just a brown flash it fry up, it. Brown it up and pop it into that's the oven it. and let it heat up. And that's it. That's it. Yep. A lot of people will ask, you know, leave out the onions, leave out the peppers. They think that we're just throwing raw peppers and stuff. You got to cook everything down, man. Like that's, you bring out the flavor that way. I agree, way. man. Sweat those babies yeah. out. Woo. Middle shelf going in. Now that we've sweated everything down, Add a little bit of black eyed pea. We cook these in house. This is oil poached garlic. Wow. So then we're gonna add a little salt and pepper, of course. And then I'm gonna add a little thyme, fresh thyme. Oh man. I'm not gonna lie. I was getting really excited to taste that omelet. I'm gonna add our eggs. Right back on the stove. Again, a little bit more salt and pepper. One thing I like to do whenever I'm making omelets, I don't mess with them too much. And what I do is okay. Okay. I'll turn my heat down just a little bit. So I'm lifting up the egg and I'm letting it roll right off the top, right up underneath it. Now we're giving the layers too. Exactly. Another thing that I, that I like to do, uh, a lot of people don't do this, I like to be able to see the stuff on the outside of the omelet. So what I'll do right now is I'm gonna flip it. Add a little cheese, and then we're gonna pop it into the oven for just a second. Just to melt. I don't serve dry eggs. I like to make sure that they're nice and moist and uh, still just a little bit runny, man. That's that's the trick. Okay, okay. Um, so now we're gonna plate. And so um, your first introduction to the plate is visual. So you want to look good. You know, if you, if you have a, a situation where somebody sees it, it's visually appealing, they're gonna, you know, instantly, they're gonna have a different feel about it, you know? 100% I agree, because before people taste it, what do they do? They see it. Yep. They've Smell already made it. their mind up. You know, and that's where we try to separate ourselves as a breakfast spot. You know, we want, we want to be an experience. I love presentation, so. Put our potato cake down. I kind of always offset the okay. spatula. And then we're just gonna lay it right on top of the potato cake. These are some local pea shoots from one of our farmer friends. A little agramado. There we go. This is pretty amazing. This is this looks amazing. Thank you. I mean, this is what sets you apart. This is what has definitely got you the following. Well, I look up to you, man. Like you're a legend in Southern Oregon. Oh, so oh like, man, <laughs> what you're doing down here is amazing, man. Uh, like well, we need people like you down here. No, man. we appreciate you. I mean, this, like I said, this is this is unique. This is different. Growing up, all I ever wanted to be was a cook, and now he's a great one. If you're looking for a really cool Oregon mug, this is the guy to go. Uh, Studio B LLC. Ben. Yes, Vinny. Nice to meet you. Very, my pleasure, absolutely. So I'm really stoked to meet you and see how you do things. Let's step inside. I'll follow you. Okay. All right. Well, as we approach, you can see right here on the left is the kiln yard. These are the kilns. This is where I basically turn the clay or mud into rock. These fire to, generally speaking, over 2,000 degrees. 6, and yep, so let, oh, and this is the bunny. This That's is Bimble Snuff. Bimble Snuff. Yep, right on cue. Oh, very <laughs> nice. Yep, he enjoys working with me in the studio. Now that is a cool animal. Check it out, he's still following us. This is where it happens, all right here in this spot. Yeah, yeah, I have, have utilized this space in a super efficient way. This is one of the smallest studios I know of, 
but um, it ha really works for me. I just love the standing wheel, and then I can open this door, and the bunny can run in and out, and the waterfall's right there, so I get that sound. It's all north facing, so I don't have any glare, but I have plenty of light, as you can see. It really is just a dream studio for me. Oh, yeah, so it's like completely opposite of my environment. Yeah. In the restaurant and the right. kitchen every night. So this would be a very, uh, very nice change uh, once in a while. So maybe I come hang out here and there. You're totally you know? welcome. And uh, I'll free labor. Awesome. So awesome. This is amazing. I've been looking for that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I've weighed these pieces out. This is clay right here to basically make these guys right here. So this is what I'm making right now. And then I throw them here. I put them on that board there and then they end up right here. My next step is I'll tool those a little bit and then I'll take them out here, fire them, and then I'll glaze them in here again and then they'll go back here, be fired one more time and then they turn out a finished product of which um, looks like something like this. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, these are, I really like these ones. So this started with this. Would you look at that? So here's the clay throwing process. First, you have to make sure the clay is well centered on the wheel. That's what Ben's doing here. Now once it's centered, you can then focus on forming the walls of your vessel. And a potter has tools besides a wheel and a kiln. These can help you achieve a nice clean finish. Like this wire that allows Ben to remove the finished vessel from the wheel. Super cool pieces, super cool guy, and super cool concept. Now if you're traveling to Southern Oregon and you've seen this and you want to know, well how can I get my hands on a UFO Sasquatch coffee mug or whatever it may be. How do we do that? I'm available online. Well, let's see how we do with one of these. Let me, let me put my hand on a piece of clay. I'm about to get a crash course in pottery and trying to make one of these beautiful mugs. Let's see how it goes. So what do I do? Dude, you want to get centered? <laughs> Grab a piece of clay and throw it on there, man. It's like, it's like riding a piece a, of dough. Honestly, it's like riding a bike. Like riding a bike? All right, now I'm gonna push down. down. And this pedal down here is how you're gonna it get it spinning, yeah? Okay, it's not gonna fly off and smack me in the face, no. No promises. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there's a lot of power <laughs> right there. Okay, check it out, I'm gonna put my fingers in the middle. There you go. Everyone starts off making a paperweight. I gotta, I gotta trim it out. Look at that. I gotta trim it out a little bit here. Yeah, man. Okay. You're owning that. I don't know what you're gonna eat or drink out of that thing. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Get taller. Wow. Just wow, Vinny. You're natural. This thing looks like Mount Vesuvius. I have even more respect for you now than I did when I walked in. So, <laughs> okay, I'm I, I, I'm gonna change it into a vase now. Ooh. Ooh, hold on a second. I'm just waiting for the moment where it's gonna destroy itself. Oh, you just said it. Gosh, that's messed up. That's you. You did that. You did it. Okay. I'm done. It was going so good and then he, he thwarted my efforts. It's okay, I blame people all the time, man. As you can see, there's a lot of effort, there's a lot of skill that goes into clay making and uh, it's best left to the professionals. I gotta say, respect. That was great, good stuff. Wasn't that a cute bunny? I hope you enjoyed my friends just as much as I did. We met Scott with decades of experience in the bakery business. Then Braden invited us over to show us how he puts his twist on a classic breakfast dish. Finally, we discovered how Ben adds a unique Oregon touch to a traditional craft. 
And that's just a taste of Medford. There's still so much to see, so many people to meet, and so many things to eat. So join me next time as we go all across Oregon. This episode of All Across Oregon was made possible in part by Realtor Scott Lewis, serving Southern Oregon for more than 30 years. Scott lives here, works here, and loves it here. John Warakoy, premier CPA tax professional and profit builder in Southern Oregon and Northern California. And French, with over 30 years' experience in the beauty industry, French carries and sells only the finest of beauty products. Visit allacrossoregon.com to find out more about the people and places you've just seen. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram.